moving to a new country is difficult no matter even if they're speaking the same language often that makes the subtlety of the difficulty more now not all of wales is an english speaking area but still it still applies and i'm from america originally texas i moved here quite a long time ago now but i hope my lessons and what i've learned can help others to move to this country. So this is Benjamin, let's look at that now. By the way, this is not gonna be like lots of editing and imagery like some of my other videos. Just a quick advice video for people wanting or considering moving here. For those of you curious about my own journey, what difficulties have I come across? Well, the first one, a car. Right, if you're from like a nice suburban happy family in America, yeah, I mean, it's not gonna be a problem for you. Like you'll, you'll be able to get a car, like, you know, that's just something that was easier for you in life. But, you know, I'm, I'm basically from the ghetto and, you know, we don't really get a nice car at 16, you know? <laughs> um, so, I didn't have a car when I came here. I didn't have, the ability to get one. And I went in toward university, so my mind wasn't really focused on that, but the price of that is, you can't really get around Wales without a car. You can get between the major urban centers, but you're talking about going all the way through England on a train. So to really explore this country, you need one. So before you come here, think about that make arrangements when you're here you know as you walk around you'll see people driving with big l's or d's learners disquid agencies which advertise learning or teaching people to pass their theory test you can book a block for like 10 hours and if you got an american license yeah you'll just take that you'll learn for like 10 hours not on the same day i hope and then take your theory test and you'll be able to drive and just get a car. But if you're coming at this from, you know, you're not from a middle-class family who just has a nice car, you know, it's gonna be more difficult to get around. So you're gonna have to think ahead of time, like, how do I do this? And you got bus passes. And if you're coming here, by the way, on like a visa or something, or a visitor's visa. Get the bus pass first, and then get the visa or whatever, because you can get a visitor rail pass or other type things which are often cheaper, so you can slide in the door, get that, and then get other bits, and it'll save you money in the long run. Um, anything else about a car? Yeah, you just, you just gotta have one. The public transport is, absurd i mean wales is a small country but it's not i mean if you're driving around i don't know new jersey it's pretty direct but here in wales to get anywhere it's gonna take a long time even though it's just over the hill so think about that before you come here and getting here, like airports and stuff, it's actually quickest to fly to London to get to like Aberystwyth. I know it, that sounds crazy, but transport is so messed up. Like don't fly to Cardiff if you're going to the north. Like the, go to Liverpool or Manchester and then come in. You know, if, if you're going to like southwest of the country, yeah, Cardiff, Bristol, fly there, but don't, don't fly to Cardiff to get to Gwyneth. You, you'll just, you'll add literally another entire day on your journey. You don't want to do that. Now, because I didn't get the car, I used that money, I saved it, and I put it to a solicitor. I took that money to a solicitor and I said, right, for the visas, for like, not at that point, but the citizenship, 
just sort this out. I don't want to deal with all this paperwork. So by not having a car, you can save a lot of money and then approach a solicitor and say, you know what, sort out all this immigration stuff because it's complicated. Just be aware of that. And if you get a good solicitor, you won't have to worry about anything. But there are a lot of solicitors who are going to try and scam you. And for a lot of services, generally, immigrants are like prey. So be aware of that, especially in Britain. There's, a, there's an entire industry on scamming immigrants here. Because not specifically for Wales, but Britain, a lot of the world sees this as a prestige model to aspire to. And people in seedy, shady, scamming environments are aware of that. And they're trying to take advantage of people's hopes. So what I did is you go through official channels and then ask solicitors, hey, do you know so-and-so? Don't just go directly to the immigration solicitors. Go to an established solicitor and then say, hey, you know, do you know anybody immigration? Maybe you could let me know of someone, yeah? If you're coming here because you want to learn about Welsh, experience the Welsh language, you have to keep in mind that you have the right for any political or, or not political, but official state body to have service in Welsh. And the problem that you are going to come across is that native speakers just roll over. They're like, oh, well, it's a bit of trouble to speak English. And so it makes it really difficult for you as a learner to speak Welsh because the people whose first language is Welsh a lot of the time they just act like they can't be bothered so they're just like oh I'll, you know just in this situation it's fine just turn to English and what that does is it creates a bubble around state institutions where the language just becomes English like by default naturally and so either you're addressed in English automatically because a lot of first language speakers just can't be bothered to speak Welsh. I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. So keep in mind, if you want to learn Welsh, you are going to have to physically fight in many situations just to be able to do so. Once you're here and living here, you need to know especially if we're coming from like America or other places, they have something here called a council tax. And basically, you look for a place to rent, right? And you can just assume that there's going to be like 150 pounds on top of that. Plus like police commissioner nonsense. So, I mean, I don't know. I grew up in like, basically abandoned in, a, abandoned in a caravan. So maybe people in America do do this, I don't know, but I didn't grow up, I didn't grow up around an environment where people were paying taxes. I mean, there was a lot of criminal stuff where I was growing up, you know? So, but this council tax is set up in a way that's directly opposed to the interests of working people and the poor because it's not by income or anything it's by property but if you're renting a property it's still based on the property and the landlord doesn't pay usually i mean you can occasionally get deals but if you're living in multiple house multiple house occupancy like other people you get out of it if you're a student, you get out of it. If you are a single person, like you're not coming with your partner, you get a 25% discount if you're living just yourself. There's a few other ways you can get out of it or, or wiggle free, but usually you're gonna have to pay it, right? So just assume that. It's not fair. The ways in which the poor are 
pushed down both in America and Britain are very similar. But the ways in which America is corrupt is so much more corporate and, yes, financial, but in that, like, just neoliberal corporate structure combined with now with social justice stuff. But in Britain, you do have that financial bit, but it's more of an established, entrenched, it's not quite an, it's not an oligarchy, right? It's not, this is not Russia. This is not Russia. It's just the ragtag remnants of the aristocracy holding on, trying to patch holes. That's kind of what it is. And there's different fees attached at random places when you're trying to grow yourself economically, you find obstacles, just inconvenient little fees here and there. Like when you're buying a house in Wales, you have to pay like a coal search fee for like coal shafts, even though, okay, well, someone who bought the house before obviously paid it. There's not been a coal mine dug since they paid it, so why do I have to pay it again? Because some guy who owns such and such gets a little commission off your fee. It's a bit of corruption, yeah. So the next one. Oh, um, the council tax letter that you get counts as ID. So keep it and you can use it. Like when you're gonna open up a bank, things like that, which I'll get to. But one thing you will get here after six months, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, you get healthcare automatically. I mean, you need the the identity number usually, but and you have to register with a GP, but a GP is a well, family doctor, Medig Taylor. You get the idea, but you get healthcare here, which you don't in America, which if you're coming from a working class, like if you're from the ghetto, like, look, that's going to help you. Like, take what you can get, like, just get it, right? Like, if you're coming here for a better life, Get hooked up with healthcare. Just do it. You get prescriptions here, by the way, in Wales. Like, if you've got a condition, like, you need to pop pills every once in a while to, like, stay healthy. You get prescriptions here in Wales for free. Like, I know people where I grew up, like, dying because they can't get the pills they need. I mean, you know, that's a lifesaver. So, if you want a better life, you might get reason to get hooked up on that, right? Next, banks, right? No one taught me about money or banking when I was a kid. I mean, why? It's like, I'd rather someone te teach me about money and banking than like even send me to school, right? Overdraft, like when you can take out more than you have in the bank, most students, get like interest-free overdraft. I mean, oh, if I had known the potential of this, I waited until my third year before I even understood what this meant. I could have taken out two grand and put that in like investments. What a waste, serious. If you can do it, do it, but you're gonna need the biometric residence permit or like other official documents. If you got an Irish passport, that works. We'll get to Ireland in a minute. Nice back door. But the bank, getting into the first one is the hardest. Then first open up the other account within the same bank. So you've got that one back up in case the first has to close. Then open up an account with another bank using your current account at this bank but keep the other account open right so what you do then is you cut down the trace that you have i'm not telling you to do anything illegal i'm just trying to get you a bit of freedom and get you out of the ghetto right then you have two bank accounts that there's no trace that you're from like any country or whatever just do it 
It, that's not illegal. It's not illegal under British law. And that act in itself is not illegal under American law. So, you've broken no laws right there. What you do after that is up to you. What you do with it is up to you. I'm not telling you to do anything. You can do a lot of things with it, but if you want a better life, you have to think outside the box. Now, I mentioned Ireland. Now, Ireland, a lot of companies like Google are based in Dublin rather than over here in Britain. And Ireland has agreements with the UK so that you can get in to the UK. Like, if you can get to Ireland, the UK is open to you. Yeah. But also, if you're in Ireland and you open up accounts there and you go into Britain, there's nothing connecting you to, like, Canada. There's nothing connecting you to Nigeria. Like, you're just... From a British financial perspective, you're Irish. And that means you have more flexibility. Also, it gives you more flexibility in terms of visas and eventually citizenship. If you have a road to Irish citizenship, that's how you get in here. That is how you get into the UK. And a lot of businesses that pay through online means pay through Dublin and like YouTube, like I get paid through, well, what do you think? If you have dollars, American dollars and British pounds, like I make money when the pound is low, right? So when all these people voted Brexit and they were poor, like they they shot themselves in the foot, I made money. I, mean, I couldn't believe it. Like, what? And that's just how it works. If you're coming here from America, think in terms of being able to move your money in the cycles when the British pound is lower to give you more weight and purchasing power here. The inverse could be true as well. If you're planning to go back, getting paid in pounds, means that when you do go back, you're gonna have a lot of purchasing power. But speaking of not coming back or not going back, if you're planning to leave the United States and not come back, I would have taken out like as many loans as I could, right? <laughs> like I had no idea that I was not coming back. Oh man, the, the amount of thousands of pounds, or dollars rather, that I could have had. You know, because, you know, my credit doesn't matter in America. Like, the opposite, if you're planning to live here for a while, take out loans like six months before you're gonna leave and then go back to America. I mean, hey, I, I know that looks wrong to some people, but do these banks give a f about us? Do you really think these legal and economic structures have your benefit in mind if you don't own like 50 houses? <laughs> like the game is rigged. You might as well play it like the game is rigged. Otherwise, you're stuck in the ghetto. Like that's just how it is. You don't want to be stuck in the ghetto. Next, the weather. I just cleared out some boxes today because the damp, right? Now, a lot of the United States is dry or high altitude or high plains, but here, it's not so much that it's cold. It's not really that cold. It's just always slightly cold and damp, which means mildew and mold grows on everything and less Less wealthy housing is pretty much always damp in this country. If you're paying rent, likelihood is at least one room in your house is a bit 
damp and you've got to you've got to work to manage it but it means that you can't really store stuff on the floors as much just be aware so that your stuff is not destroyed when you first move in because you know I moved here from abroad and yeah I've had stuff lost because oh I didn't realize that you have to worry about that kind of thing in this country yeah so just be aware and the weather here though is it's not designed to bundle up like that. It's, it's not like Midwest cold or Russian cold, right? It's not like that. It's, you know. I'm sorry that I don't have a suit. Well, I do have a suit. I just, I didn't wear it today. One of them. But the weather here is designed for nice, tight, formal layers. I mean, there's no better place to wear a suit, is there? It just feels good to wear in Britain to wear a suit and tie because the weather is perfect for it. Because the suit keeps out in that structure the damp from penetrating. That's, I guess, why it became popular here. It fits the climate. Next, don't expect customer service to be as good as the United States. People are not just going to smile at you automatically. In many cases, they won't even acknowledge your existence. And thankfully, you don't have to worry about tipping because we pay our people like a wage. You know, we, we, we don't have slave labor here. So we pay waiters and waitresses to work, which that's, that's nice. Getting a phone. Now, if you go, th don't go through Vodafone for phone or internet or anything. They'll they'll rip you off. A lot of the major corporations here, they add lots of little fees here and there. It's the British way of ensuring that different investors and high interest, often aristocratic groups, get their little fee. So in most cases, you're going to save money by not shopping at the bigger shops in terms of not just internet, but phone and groceries like Tesco's and Sainsbury's long run, they're going to be more expensive. Like I, I like to shop at little because in the long run, it's cheaper. Um, and the quality, frankly, is a bit better, but you can use companies like gift gaff for a phone. Like where's my phone? Six pounds a month. I, I, like, I own the phone already. I own the phone already. Six pounds a month. That's gift gaff, right? All you need is the SIM card to start up. They send you that. So that's really cool. And it's gonna save you a lot of money that you can then use to get British citizenship. If you wanna get like furniture, British Heart Foundation is one that I like to go through for not not office type furniture but um home furnishings that kind of thing that I, I like to go through them to see what deals they have well those are just a few tips I hope that helps someone and in the next video we'll look at some Welsh place names I think so we'll see you next time Deal.